open. This will be a virtual meeting of the Marinwood CSD Board of Directors. There will not be a public location for participating in this meeting. Any interested member of the public can participate telephonically or via internet by utilizing the web link or dial-in information printed on this agenda. Instructions on how to make a public comment during the meeting. All at all at points in the meeting, when the meeting chair requests public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting, either via internet or telephone, shall indicate their desire to speak. If participating via internet, please click the raise hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected via telephone, please dial star nine. All public comments shall be addressed to the board of directors in its entirety and limited to three minutes per speaker. The board of directors may choose to respond to comments or request staff to respond at the conclusion of the public comment period. All right, let's call to order. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes, President Ruggieri. Here. I will mark Director Case absent. Director Kilkenny. Here. I will also mark Director Oyserman absent, Director Shea. Um, present. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, moving on to the agenda. We would like to adjust the agenda. Any um, any comments from the board about the agenda? No. All right, anything from the public? Uh, one second. Stephen. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, um, I often ask this, that we uh, pause to take a look at the future. Um, and somehow it never gets on the agenda. I wish we could talk about the future tonight. And when I talk about, when I say talk about the future, really what I'm talking about is um, your vision for the future, the big ideas that motivate you individually and um, ideas that you have for the future of our community. As you know, we're going to experience a lot of growth and I think it's important that we have a coherent idea of uh, where we're going. So uh, the, long story short, I'm, I'm frustrated that uh, such uh, suggestions never get incorporated uh, into the agenda. I think it's, especially at this time of year, it's particularly appropriate that we have the kind of reflection um, and big ideas for the future. Thanks. Thank you, Stephen. Um, any other public comment on the agenda? No. Nope. Nope. All right. Then let's consider the agenda adopted. <laughs> Moving to the consent calendar. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. I guess I'll second. I'm just kidding. Thank you. Um, any any comments from the board on the consent calendar? No questions. All right. Seeing none. Any from the public? Uh, there are no hands raised for the consent calendar. All right. So then we take us to a vote. Is it Rogeri? Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Shea. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Um, the calendar is approved. Item D, public comment open. I open time for items not on the agenda. Uh, yeah. comment. One second. Stephen. Well, since you don't want to talk about the future, I'd like to talk about the future. First, I want to start, uh, uh, thank each and every one of you for serving this year, and in particular, uh, Lisa Ruggieri, am I saying that correct? Um, I think you've, you've really uh, done the board proud. It's a really auspicious start, um, and I appreciated uh, the way that you conducted yourself in meetings. Um, you took time to listen, uh, to keep things orderly. Um, I do, you know, there were a few things that I, I wish hadn't happened, but uh, I think uh, you're plugged in, and um, I appreciate your service. Looking towards the future, um, I hope um, we can, um, each and every one of you, take time to reflect not only uh, what has been going well this last year, but the things that you value in the community and uh, your hopes for the future. This is really uh, your role more than anything, I believe. You're not here simply to approve uh, what the staff has done. I mean, that's that's good. But your your role is to uh, provide the vision and the direction uh, for the district. Um, and uh, in keeping with that, I would, uh, particularly because everybody at this point, I believe, has been appointed. They've never, they haven't campaigned. Um, and uh, my pardon to you, Bill, I know you campaigned, what, 10 years ago, but it's time that you get out in community and hear from different voices. Um, maybe that's not possible, but we could have a uh, community meeting like a lot of communities do in the spring um, to discuss your vision and to go over uh, business of the district. Um, I think that would bring cohesion to our community and also direction for uh, the ways that we want to grow. Um, and that's all. Thanks. Thank you, Stephen, for your comment. I appreciate it. Um, any other public comment? Uh, there are no other public comments. All right. Moving on to district matters. Item one, election. Whoa, sorry. My dog, he was very excited about this next item. Um, the Not as excited as you are, Lisa, all right? <laughs> Not nearly. Not nearly, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> election of board officers for calendar year 2023, board president, and vice president. Um, so we, I've seen um, Director Oysterman has voiced her interest in um, in presidency for this next year. Yeah, and Lisa, can I follow that up really quick? I just want to be very clear. Um, Savan, when she informed me that she was not going to be able to attend this meeting, asked if I would uh, just state that she would be interested and willing to fill that role. So I actually asked her to give me something in writing so that way there's nobody speaking for her. So that is why she submitted it. She knew she wasn't going to be at the meeting. Um, and I just wanted something from her kind of stating that, that she would be uh, interested and willing to fulfill the role of president should the board so choose. Uh, so that, that is why that's in there. We don't typically have like written statements included. The only reason this is included is because she knew she wouldn't be able to attend. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate the, uh, the additional context. Um, so it's great, very excited about that. I, you know, I want to open it up, however, if um if any other directors would be interested in considering the role. <laughs> I think we should nominate Savon. No, I think it's great. All right. All right, absolutely. Yeah. And um and, and and should Savon take on the role of president, I would be happy to serve as vice president. I think we should Even better. another missing person as vice president. <laughs> oh, okay. Can we nominate someone who's not here to do that? I mean, technically I think we could, but I don't think he'd be very happy with us. <laughs> I think he's well deserving matter. though. I, I agree. I agree. I think I mean I, I will say I've um I've learned quite a lot in this year. Um as president, I would encourage every director to serve a year, um, at yep. least in, in, in this capacity. Um it's a completely different perspective and um I've I've appreciated the experience and it's been an honor to serve. So I'm grateful. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Um, I am 
willing to do vice president as well, but if you want to take on this year, I'm fine with that too. I'll stick with my fire commission. I like okay. that. All right. Yeah. Why don't you stick with the fire commission for another year and I'll advise right. this year and then we'll see what happens next year. Thank you though. I appreciate that. But to be clear, liaison appointments will happen next month. So you guys are getting ahead of yourselves. Very efficient. I'm just saying like the negotiation that. is, you know. Good for chat. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, great. So then, so, so should I, do I make a motion? Is that how this works? You need a motion. Uh, you can do it all in one as a motion for president and vice president, if you would so choose. Okay. So I move to appoint um, Director Sivan Oyserman as president for this next year uh, and myself as vice president. I'll second. second. Right. Any comments from the board? I think you're all well-deserving. Oh, thank you so yes. much. Um, any, any comments from the public? Sure. One second, please. Steven. Yeah. So, you know, um, I think Savan's going to take this personally, uh, you know, given her comments last week um, uh, or last month. Um, but I do want to point out uh, some issues. You know, uh, Savan has served for five years, and she ha during that time, I've reached out to her many times. Um, I've written her, I've, uh, I've called her, and I've never, never received a response. Now, I know that's not true with everybody. Maybe she particularly doesn't like me, but um, like or hate me, um, the job entails service to the community. And um, I do think that it is your obligation, right or wrong, you know, to engage with the public. Uh, so you have a complete understanding of uh, what issues are of concern in the community. She's isolated herself. And for that reason, um, plus the way that she interacts online, that she, she waits till I make a comment and then she argues and I can't respond to, to her uh, comments or misrepresentations. I don't really feel that dialogue moves forward with Savan. I don't, I'm, I'm hopeful that she's learned in the past and hope uh, from her past mistakes. And I hope if she listens to this, she uh, takes my comments to heart. Um, we do have a lot of issues in the community. Um, this is not uh, a popularity contest. This is service. Um, this is vision. This is the future. And, um, you know, with the responsibility does there are some obligations with responsibilities and um, hopefully she, if you guys vote on her, sounds like you, you're willing to do that, uh, that uh, you can help her uh, become better at this position. So thank you. All right, any other comments? Uh, there are no other hands raised. All right. All right. Well, I appreciate your comment, Stephen. And um, I, I know I certainly have confidence that Sivan will be very effective in this role. And I encourage you to um, keep your mind open and continue to engage and you know, um, and, and, and I, I think, I think you might find that you'll be surprised because people change. And I think that, um, she, she serves this community very well. Um, and I certainly have all the confidence in the world that she will be successful in this role. Well stated. So with that, um, can we have a vote? Board President Ruggieri. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. And Director Shea. Aye. Thanks. All right. Moving on to item two. The, re the approval of the authorization expenditure to become a participating agency of the Cal Ops system for public agency personnel recruitment and employment application processing. Uh, yep, this one's mine, so if you don't mind. I, I tried to give a decent uh, staff report leading into this as well as the website so that you can go and use it. Uh, Cal Ops is, you know, for a very simple way to put it, it's a job board, although it does a lot more and is specific to public agencies. It was developed by the city of Foster City uh, for specific use by various public agencies. They are uh, beyond just being a place where you can post job sites. It actually is a place where you can kind of process and sort through applications. It handles the entire application process. They're filed, they're put in there. Everything is kind of put into, uh, for each posting, it organizes it by that. There are several um, Number agencies just right here in Marin County who use it. Um, I know a lot of our staff are very familiar with this platform as well. It's an, uh, an initial investment and fairly significant one, but it is certainly developing into kind of the premier uh, uh, job placement, job search site for people looking to work in the public sector. I know the city of Santa Fe uses it and has used it for a while. Um, so if Chief White has any personal experience or wants to speak to it, I would certainly invite him to. Uh, we're just kind of finding ourselves in you know, a, a even more competitive hiring landscape out there, not only just for fire, which you know we've got two positions we're going to be filling here as quickly as possible. Uh, we have an open rec position. We've you know lately had to fill up a full-time park maintenance position. I know Robin, um, our assistant rec director, you know certainly wants to look into it and use it even for you know some of her seasonal positions and school year positions. Um, so I think I can speak for the whole staff when I say that uh, I think it's a worthy investment for us to make. As a small agency, we don't have an HR professional and, you know, the application process is time consuming. Um, this is a tool that will certainly help us to kind of get through this, um, not to mention all of the application materials on this website have already been legally vetted um, through the city of Foster City and their legal counsel. Uh, so I, I highly encourage and recommend that we, this is something that we do go for. Um, I had a question come up that I'm still kind of waiting on an answer for um, on if, you know, through this, they can help us kind of advertise through other mediums, uh, open positions. So I don't have that answer yet. Um, but again, I know, you know, when people come on here, they build profiles. It's, you know, it's kind of, I don't want to compare it to like a social media, um, but it is, you know, more of where you know, people are building their profile a little bit like a LinkedIn and, and their profile can automatically be suggested to us um, as potential people, so on and so forth. So I, I recognize it's a, uh, especially that initial outlay um, setup fees are relatively significant, which is why it is actually on the board report here, because this isn't something that we had uh, budgeted for, but we can certainly budget for moving forward just with the annual fees. But I, I would suggest that I think we could use every uh, competitive advantage we can get. And I think we're at a disadvantage if we don't start participating in this platform for our hiring and uh, employment recruitment needs. All right. Good, good evening, everyone. I'd just like to piggyback briefly on what Eric shared. I don't have a lot of direct interaction with Cal Ops myself, but in speaking with my staff here in San Rafael, um, it seems that this is a very useful tool for them when it, when it comes to assessing candidates and getting a, a look early on at the types of candidates who apply for positions and getting a sense of the numbers of candidates that may be qualified and those that may not be as an example. And so, as Eric alluded to, um, this is a very competitive environment, especially in public safety now. And any, any advantages you can use in the way of tools or resources that can help us issue and attract candidates and sort through 
um, those candidates that may not really deserve your time and attention. This certainly serves that purpose and helps to actually do some of the work that needs to be done from an HR standpoint. Um, and so while it's kind of pricey on the front end, I think long term, the benefit will start to reveal itself over time. So it looks like uh, multiple agencies are seeing value in this tool and are looking to get on board with what Foster City had done uh, to, to become innovative and try to make sure they were using something that was going to serve their needs as well. So just wanted to piggyback on that. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Anything else from the board? Nothing. I mean, I, I'll say, you know, this, this type of area is, I don't have a lot of areas of expertise when it comes to these board meetings, but this is, this is my jam, job boards, I know. And um, I got a chance to look into Cal Ops. I hadn't heard of it before. I've never recruited in the public sector before. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a very, very cool and very functional tool. And I, um, you know, I think, um, I think it would be, it'd be good to kind of know if it, if, like Eric said, there's a question about whether it can be an aggregator to post externally. Um, but I think that if this is something that's also well known to the community of people that would be interested in these roles, and it can be used for multiple roles at all levels, um, from my perspective, it, it appears to be a worthy investment. Um, anything from the public? Uh, yeah, one second. Steven. <laughs> Excuse me. So, how many um, positions do we have uh, that are specialist uh, positions that would be unique to government workers? Um, public safety, for sure, the, the uh, firefighters. But what about um, the people in in the office? Um, I guess rec staff might be. Um, but uh, the business uh, side, uh, these are general generalized skills. When Eric was hired, we uh, hired a headhunter and uh, it fielded a lot of candidates, and uh, we ended up hiring Eric, who did not have the um, uh, initial uh, criteria for the position. Um, and um, I, I just think that. While this is might be a useful tool, I think I think it's of limited use to our small district, and um, I also see the value of putting out um, our job applicants to people outside of government, so we get a uh, uh, a different perspective on our operations. Um, I, too often, government uh, is not innovative; it's it's uh, um, they're they're not doing the cutting edge stuff that you would see in the private sector. Um, I think if someone's uh, looking to get into uh, the government sector, I think the, the very first uh, place that you would look is the generalized job boards, and. Uh, so I, I actually don't think this is, I think this is a very expensive uh, tool that uh, we would use for very few employees. Um, and uh, it might just limit our, our, who we are looking for, who, who we hire from, the pool that we hire from. Anything, is that it, Stephen? Yeah. <laughs> any response to public comment or any additional public comment? Uh, there are no other hands raised and I'll just choose not to respond. Okay, sounds good. Um, All right, when we have a motion to approve. So All right, thank you. And <laughs> I think we're ready for a vote. Board President Rosary. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Shea. Aye. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you all. Of course. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to for this tool and kind of to see more about its functionality. So this is good stuff, I think. Yeah, um, I'm excited for it too, to say the least. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> um, moving on to the district manager reports. Sure. Um, you know, a few items here in the report. I'll just kind of start with the maintenance facility. And even though I didn't mention it in here, I assume you all kind of saw some of the pictures that were taken uh, last week of the exterior of the building. It's coming along really nice. I'm happy to let you know that all permit holds have now been released. Um, we have a final inspection scheduled for this week. Uh, I don't anticipate any uh, further complications with that. And I think we'll have this thing closed out by the end of the week with the permit uh, uh, fully done. So from there, park guys will start moving everything in um, as their other work schedules allow. And as they are kind of doing that, once some of the bigger items are kind of moved and set in place, um, you know, I'm kind of leaving it to Luke and his crew to decide the most opportune time to start getting some of that fencing down uh, around the facility, recognizing that you know through the moving process, uh, there might be kind of some stuff kept outside while we figure out where exactly it to go. So if they need the space, without the worry of uh, intrusions or people uh, coming through there. Uh, but otherwise, that fencing will be down soon as well. Um, certainly wanted to acknowledge, you know, Luke and the park guys and Carolyn, for that matter, who are all out there um, taking on all of the landscaping that you see in the pictures, planting plants, um, you know, going with the ground cover and the weed barriers and just getting the whole area looking really nice. I, I think it looks great. It certainly has a much more of a, uh, a park-like feel, especially if you look at some of these pictures. I, I should have pointed out that that one picnic table that's pictured that's one of two that's been placed out there along this new walkway that's been put in. Um, and, you know, if you look at these in color on your computer, uh, they certainly pop a lot better than the black and whites that I've uh, printed for you. But they are, uh, it's just, it's a really nice building. I, I think it came out really well. Um, we're certainly excited to be able to move into it and start using it. Um, Otherwise, uh, kind of moving on here. Uh, yep, I uh, admittedly um, completely lost track of the need for commission appointments. Um, so that process is slightly delayed, but it is still taking place. There's been announcements put out on social media as well as on our website, hopeful uh, to get some uh some interested people in these uh, and then anybody who does respond will be presented at the january board meeting um, i uh, apologize for the oversight um, but i do recognize that uh, with the schedule in place it still allows plenty of time for public to uh, look into this possibility uh, and it still puts them on the commissions and seated for the same meeting they would have been otherwise um, but again i do apologize for the oversight and hopefully uh, we'll be presenting you all with some potential uh, appointment candidates at your next meeting um, at the horseshoe pits i know the board is aware of this um, the district has received some complaints from local residents concerning activity at the horseshoe pits uh, i personally just, uh, met with them last week or the week before possibly for a little over an hour um, and then last evening we actually had a meeting with some members who uh, regularly frequent the horseshoe pits and kind of explained to them what the concerns were that were presented us as well as our own concerns they were very receptive uh, and understanding of what this was i am hopeful that this situation can be resolved uh, moving forward in a way that uh, is fair and just to the entire community um, I, I am optimistic that we can get there for that um, and then other item of note uh, this sunday uh, weather looks like it should be good i did get confirmation from the north pole santa claus will be in town for his annual tour of marinwood lucas valley uh, it's a big long full day but we're looking forward to it so uh, uh, social media posts on that have also gone out uh, the tour will start right around 9 a.m and it's going to go through uh, northern marinwood uh, first this year kind of uh, you know through the wood streets there and then over to the stones um, santa's got to eat so we'll take a little break for lunch midday and then push through lucas valley and lucas valley estates in the afternoon questions so this is on the 18th right yes this sunday december 18th okay, okay, calendar. okay good you better be home I know, I better. all day waiting in anticipation you'll, you'll be after lunch so later afternoon i see bill has his hand up patiently that's me I'm bill. Go ahead. <laughs> patiently waiting <laughs> out of curiosity eric how many neighbors have been complaining about the horseshoe pits um 
Stephen has made note of it at several meetings and then one other neighbor. Okay. I thank you for your whole report. I don't have much to add, but I felt like I should say something. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, anything from the public? Sure, one second. Stephen. Uh, yes, I'm just going to go from top to bottom. A maintenance facility. Um, looking forward to seeing the maintenance facility in its glory. Um, and, um, you know, when I saw the concept drawings of the planting uh, and the walkway, I thought we were going to put in a circular bench where the picnic uh, benches are. Um, and I, I would, if not, I would encourage that we do that. Something the size of, say, the Gaga pit, where a group of uh, 10 or 12 people can sit around in a semicircle and uh, uh, look at each other in the face and converse and what, what have you. It'd be great for camps. It'd be great for staff meetings. It'd be great for the guys at the horseshoe pit um, to converse. Um, it would be great for just strangers coming sitting down because when you sit in a, a circular pit you have to actually look at each other in the face and and so i think um I, these don't necessarily cost all that much but i think it's uh, a much uh, enhance a much greater enhancement than a simple picnic table uh, doesn't mean the picnic table is a waste we can use that picnic table uh, uh, someplace else um with regard to the horseshoe pit um i want each and every one of you to listen the horseshoe pit is not a problem it's never been a problem and no one's complaining about the horseshoe pit what they're complaining about is the noise the public nuisance the drinking the illegal drinking the carousing the yelling and i know you some of you've heard uh, the videos and the audio files from it it's completely unacceptable. And at least three of the directors have been regular participants uh, against uh, our uh, ordinance and uh, are compromised uh, uh, because of it. And um, unfortunately, because this wasn't addressed early, um, and I have been mentioning this for the last couple of years, um, and, uh, you, you didn't do anything. And so you let the, the uh, citizens bring this up. Now, you're only hearing from the most vocal citizens, but there's a lot more behind them that is kind of outraged at what's going on. So uh, let's not be ridiculous. Uh, no one allows drinking parties in their parks behind uh, houses. It's a nuisance. It's got to stop. Uh, there are alternatives, uh, and uh, we should explore those alternatives and not give special meetings to lawbreakers. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. So, yes, I, and I, um, with regard to the horseshoe pit, I have also received um, communication hand delivered to my residents um, about the horseshoes and concerns surrounding it. Um, pleased to hear that there was a meeting to discuss how we can work through this amicably, and I have every confidence that a solution will be will be arrived at. So, appreciate the um, the concern and appreciate the partnership. I would like to add one more comment. Um, I encourage, and I hope that any community members who go back and want to watch this, this one exciting meeting, um, whether you support it or against the horseshoe pit, or you just want to comment, I am all ears and I'm a board member who is ready to listen to both sides, but also support every member of this community. So I just want to express my support to everybody. Thank you. Well stated, Director Kilkenny, thank you very much. All right, anything else before we move on to fire department matters? All right, all right, then moving on to fire department matters. Um, the, the draft minutes of fire commission meeting Director Kilkenny? I don't have much to add that I don't want to take away from the wonderful Chief's reports. <laughs> um, but I do want to say that our commissioners are pretty awesome and they're really, hi guys. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. Um, they are very supportive of this board and like what's going on and bring a lot to each meeting. So I just want to thank them for their time in this general meeting. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm not, a, I'm such a bad influence. I'm so sorry. <laughs> take it away, Chief. Add to that. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, well, before we get into the chief report, oh, uh, you might want to see public, comment. public comment on the fire commission meeting. Uh, I'm sorry, I was sorry. really distracted. I'm so sorry. Public comment on the minutes. One, one second. Stephen. Yeah, uh, before I get into this, um, you know, I made the comments that it, we're not talking about the horseshoe pit. We're talking about drinking, carousing, and illegal behavior, and um, really just kind of trashing up the environment of a, a family-friendly um, uh, park. It's gotten worse because these guys are heavy drinkers, some of them. There's no controls. We don't have security. This is a serious issue, and it may end up in uh, uh, in in, uh, in the courts, and um, I think you, you really you need to handle this properly. Um, this is I know you want to take care of your Tara Linda buddies, but uh, this is a much bigger issue than, than uh, the handful of guys that are doing this. This is uh, our whole uh, community future. As far as this uh, draft minutes go, um, uh, you know, honestly, I look at these, I couldn't attend because I was attending a housing meeting. Um, it's so frustrating that we don't actually have these recorded. There's no reason why we can't have them recorded, except apparently you don't want the information getting out to the public, which uh, confounds me. Actually, uh, you know, the fact that uh, the fire uh, department spends over half our budget, I think we need to have more transparency about what's going on in the fire department. So I look forward to the chief's report, but that's what I wanted to say on the agenda. Thank you. All right, thank you, Stephen. Moving on to Chief White's report. Good evening, uh, Board of Directors. I apologize for being late earlier. I was looking for my eyeglasses, could not locate them, and looked up, and I thought I had two or three extra minutes, and it turns out I was a little bit past my two or three extra minutes, so my apologies. Um, I'm gonna start right away with the Marine Wildfire Prevention Authority. The planning process for the 2023-2024 work plan uh, gets underway um, really tomorrow. Tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. there'll be a meeting with the Ops Committee Chairperson, which is currently myself, and hopefully the upcoming Ops Committee Chairperson, Chief Bill Tyler from Nevada, uh, who's expressed interest in taking on the responsibility in 2023. So that being said, um, there's uh, the Advisory Technical Committee and some others that will also start to mobilize and get their efforts underway for this next planning cycle. 
the resident grant program um, continues to operate. It was launched this past July and it's moved forward up to this point and um, provided a cumulative total of roughly $540,000 plus to residents within the county. And we expect that number to continue to grow as more projects come forward and as more individuals seek grant funding assistance. So more to follow on that, just I uh, wanted to provide those numbers to you to show you that the, the funds are reaching back into the community and are making a difference in drawing down risk in that manner. The strategic plan and annual report are now online and also available to be viewed um, online at the MWPA website. In addition, there's multiple means that information about the MWPA and some of the projects and efforts can be um, ascertained. One of them is a news article on the MWPA website. You have Facebook, you have Instagram, you have Twitter, and you also have some gallery of uh, images on the MWPA homepage. So please take a chance and, uh, or take the opportunity uh, to look at some of that information and get updated on things that have been going on. And that's going to continue to be updated with uh, Biosafe Moran and other things that continue to, to make um, quite a difference in our efforts as we move forward this coming, I won't say this coming fire season, but this coming calendar year. Um, my next update is one that's been uh, underway going back almost four months now when back in August, we, uh, the Marin County Fire Chiefs Association had a meeting with newly elected uh, Marin County Sheriff Jaime Scardina. And at that meeting, we were all stunned to learn that the, the sheriff had made a decision that he was no longer interested in providing the contracted service for Marin County Fire Dispatch. And he was going to move to the board and make a recommendation that the fire service agencies all formulate their own JPA and be kind of self-responsible for providing our own fire dispatch. Um, this is something I think had been brewing for some time, um, even prior to Sheriff Scardina actually moving into the position. I think it, it stemmed from several years of requests and or a little bit of attention that may have occurred between the sheriff's department and some of the fire chiefs who were seeking some technological implementations that weren't either able or for whatever reason weren't attractive to be um, put forward. There was some also um, some charges that uh, one of the agencies had done a little bit of homework on to determine where they're getting the value added from those charges and from the fees they were paying. Turns out um, the sheriff had not been providing those services. But also in defense of the sheriff's office, um, the sheriff had explained that they weren't fully cost recovering for the expenses they incurred for providing dispatch. And, and so given that, their numbers were, were kind of low in my estimation. We look at what they said they weren't cost recovering. I think uh, as we all start to look at the sheriff's um, challenges with trying to um, attract, uh, actually select and retain qualified fire and EM emergency medical dispatch staff, um, they're having a similar challenge that a lot of agencies are having throughout the region, if not the state, when it comes to attracting individuals who are in close proximity to this area who are willing to take on those responsibilities in those positions, which can be at times highly stressful positions. And so combine that with the, the idea that um, the Marine County Fire Chiefs Association, about my time of arrival in, in Marine County, had already been um, in conversation with Redcom, which is a regional effort among the Sonoma County Fire Agencies, to see whether or not that, that effort could expand into the Sonoma County, Marine County uh, Regional Dispatch Center. And for a variety of reasons, that wasn't possible, but it was still something that was explored. And I think that kind of set the wheels in motion for the recommendation that the sheriff had finally landed on. And so both myself and Chief Tyler on the battle had you know, stated we were happy with the services we were receiving. We just you know, hoped that there was some opportunity to continue to collaborate and, and maybe come to the table and figure out how to resolve those concerns that the sheriff had and maybe even you know, be part of the solution. But I think it was too little too late. I think um, the decision had already been made by their team that this was in their best interest. And in actuality, um, it does afford the fire service with some opportunities to expand command and control as an example. In the event there is a um, catastrophic incident or an incident that's growing in complexity and size and, and speed, we can actually assign staff down there with the model that's being proposed by the Marine County Fire Chief, um, Jason Weber, and, and the discussion we've been having in the past about what would it look like if fire had operated its own um, fire dispatch center. So that being said, um, there are opportunities. The unfortunate reality, though, is that there's going to be a substantial increase in cost to provide service um, because that, that's no longer being, um, I'll just say, underfunded by the sheriff. It's something that now all the agencies are going to have to step up and take full responsibility and cost sharing on this. Um, I think Chief Weber's goal was to try to at least get an expansive and comprehensive number of personnel on board so that it can meet county needs, but not just county fire, but the entire county. But I think the ultimate goal is to try to scale down when we see just how robust the staffing setup is really required to, to successfully provide for the dispatch needs of roughly a quarter million um, residents in Marin County. So, <laughs> excuse me, that's yet to be determined. Um, we still have ongoing meetings right now. I reached out to Chief Spiller in doing my due diligence as the larger agencies of San Rafael Marinway combined, having a, a great deal of the, the interest or financial um, costing at stake to just try to figure out what would it cost if we were to try to provide dispatch services, say, through the, fire, uh, the police department in San Rafael, <laughs> as opposed to going with the the contract for services or the JPA agreement, which um, has been proposed. And so, again, as I stated, multiple agencies are having challenges, and Chief Spiller of the San Rafael Police Department indicated they're having a similar dynamic there. And it just seemed, ultimately, um, after engaging with the information technology staff of San Rafael, that the cost would be significantly higher to try to operate our own dispatch center. But that's a last resort thing. I think it's something we still need to explore and um, get our minds and our, and our understanding around costing and, and our actual needs on how to launch something like this. If, say, for instance, five years from now, Marine County Fire decides that they no longer want to provide fire dispatch services to the county, now we're left to scramble at that point to figure out what we're going to be able to do for ourselves in Marine and maybe some of the other agencies that may look to um, receive service from us. Because I've already received a couple of inquiries from some of the agencies about whether San Rafael is going to look to stand up their own. And if so, what would that look like? Um, right now, that's, that's something that's being tabled. It's not going to be explored. But uh, I saw this to say, um, the sheriff actually wanted to move this along and have this done by July of next, next year, uh, 2023. That would have given us roughly 10 months to really stand up the internal dispatch capability, reconfigure CAT, uh, select, advertise, uh, select, recruit, train, onboard, and stand up our own dispatch capability in 10 months, which was really, that was shooting for the planet Mars, which I don't even think it was shooting for the moon. It was just something that we didn't believe was going to be realistic. Um, and so we've gone back to each of our, our respective district managers, city leadership, um, and I believe that others went to the board of supervisors expressing their concern about that timeline. And the sheriff has since acquiesced and agreed that He's willing to not only advance the timeline until maybe early 2024, but he's also willing to allow the, the fire agencies to co-locate at the Los Gamos site and use some of the workstations and other infrastructure that's there. So that's really going to be helpful as we look to try to get something put in place. Where we're going to have a facility already there with some of the, the workstations and technology already in place, which will help us launch um, the capability. Target at this point is sometime close to 2024, roughly March or April of 2024. And so we'll, uh, we'll see if that timeline is able to be met. I think the goal is to try to get that timeline met, if at all possible. Um, looks like my daughter may be bringing my glasses to me. I don't know that I'm going to really need them at this point. I'm trying to go more on memory than I'm trying to read. But um, so with that. Um, <clears throat> Um, we'll move forward to the fire foundry and the fact that they're now up to 14 total properties that have been provided with uh, assistance for removing um, different species and different um, uh, hazardous species that we'd like to make sure are actually removed from um, properties to ensure safety and slow down the ability for rapid
got COVID the day after Thanksgiving. And you know, I thought I was impervious to it because I'd gone nearly 30 months without having contracted COVID or even longer than that, actually. And I was a little frustrated given that I had been vaccinated twice, boosted three times, and thought I was doing my due diligence. But clearly, the, the scientists know more than I do. They uh, had said that this, this next wave of COVID was probably far more infectious than the previous waves. Um, but I'm just grateful that it wasn't as severe as what I've heard and, and seen other people experience with COVID symptoms. And so I'm going to attribute that to good fortune and the fact that I had been boosted and vaccinated. Um, or maybe perhaps I got one of the variants that is just not going to be that kind of severe um, uh, outcomes and signs and symptoms. A little bit of fever, definitely some apathy and malaise, uh, but nothing that was really respiratory difficulty or anything of that nature. I think what you're hearing in my voice right now actually came from a recent trip I just took where I may have been exposed to some other flu or cold symptoms out there. So my immunity must be low for me to be able to get a second something within about a two weeks you know, period. So that's pretty frustrating also. So, but, but unfortunately, it's not RSV as far as I know or some of the other things that are out here attacking uh, people left and right. And I got to tell you that the San Rafael Administrative Public Safety uh, Center and Fire Department Administrative Offices, it seems like something's rotating there um, because people that don't ever take off sick are now off sick. There's somebody off with pneumonia or somebody who's, I don't believe, has taken a day of sick leave since I arrived nearly three years ago. And he's out of the office right now. Um, it's just been a, a avalanche of illness. And so I just, I would encourage everyone, much like Dr. Peter Chen Hong, the professor of medicine at, at UCSF, folks need to continue to mask and, and do everything we can to, to adhere to those things that, that was working, you know, going back to well before Omicron became a problem. Uh, this is about the time of year where Omicron was a problem this time last year. And I'm not sure what the numbers are at the time of this report. I um, just saw that there was an upward trend. And Los Angeles County, as an example, was looking at going back to mass mandates because it was just so many people starting to contract COVID and become hospitalized. Um, those rates were, were climbing quickly. And so I don't know where they stand right now. I haven't kept track of this past week and a half. But given the, the increase in hospitalizations and the number of folks that are coming out with COVID, I don't think we're quite out of the woods yet. But you know, we'll see because we already projected wintertime was going to be a, an increase. The question is, is it going to be a sustained increase or whether it's going to be something that um, just kind of is in passing based on the fact that we have a waning interest in vaccination and or boosting. And we probably have what the scientists believe is increased immunity by virtue of so many who have been vaccinated and now so many who have actually tested positive. Is this just something we're going to be required to live with moving forward? And so um, time will tell. Can't really say with certainty, but um, still frustrated that we're going into 2023 and COVID is still a factor in our lives. So I hope that won't continue to be the case. I hope this time next year I won't be reporting on that being a reality heading into 2024, but who knows? We'll see. Um, uh, I think I've done enough on COVID. There was a, <clears throat> an airlift uh, that occurred on October 22nd. Our crews, with the assistance of the Sonoma County Sheriff's Office helicopter unit, treated and transported an injured cyclist uh, who was in an open space in Marinwood. They didn't really fly very far, but they were on a pretty steep hillside. It was going to be difficult to move that patient. So that was the quickest and safest way to evacuate the patient. And then they later used uh, ground transportation from the Marinwood market area to actually take the the individual to the hospital. And so um, I, I said this last week, and I'm amazed at how many times our Sonoma County Sheriff's Partner aerial units get out and really help out with down bicyclists or down runners or others who find themselves in a compromised situation. It's just great to have a helicopter unit that you don't have to wait 30 or 40 minutes. They can um, get on scene relatively quickly and, and really make a difference in trying to um, address someone's pain, discomfort, and or trauma. Obituary. Um, unfortunately, uh, I'm not sure how many of you are, are familiar with this individual. I know at least one or two of the commissioners were. Um, a retired Captain Jerry Thrasher recently passed on. Captain Thrasher joined um, the fire service as a volunteer in 1972 at Station 17 in Kentfield. And he was hired with the Marinewood Fire Department in 1974 and served for 30 years in the department. He served in the ranks of captain and also as a training officer and was a beloved mentor and someone who really um, demonstrated a care, concern, and passion for many that he helped either join the Marinewood Fire Department or other agencies. And so um, he served also as a shop steward and labor negotiator. So he was actively involved in all aspects that he could be involved in. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's believed that he may have had a recent diagnosis with brain cancer. And so um, that's a tough thing. I know that there's another individual right now named Paul Crimmins who's afflicted with the same thing from the San Rafael Fire Department. And he's he's had a battle since well before my arrival in San Rafael Marinewood and he's still battling. Um, but you know, this, this speaks to the, um, the risk and the, the certain things that you're exposed to sometimes on the job that you really can't foresee and, and it becomes a problem. And so just for Jerry, um, I speak about the retirement bell curve where you spend 30 years working and you're hopeful to get 30 years of retirement so that you make that full bell loop. He didn't quite get there. He got almost two thirds of the way, um, which is still pretty good. I've known others who didn't quite, you know, even reach five years with brain cancer. So um, our thoughts go out and first go out to Captain Thrasher. And uh, as we did at the last meeting with the fire commissioners, I would ask that um, we go ahead as, as I believe it was Mr. Farrakh who asked that we just really take a five or 10 second moment of silence to acknowledge uh, the loss of Captain Jerry Thrasher to cancer. So if we could do that just now, please. Thank you all. Um, the 2022 fire code was adopted, and I want to thank you all for your support of that. Um, Chief Senate and staff um, realize that that code needs to be updated every three years, and so it's their job and responsibility to, to take a look at the code and see where you know those things are applicable and helpful to the community and what areas can actually uh, make a difference and, and should be updated. And they worked on getting that done for both Marinewood and San Rafael, and so we won't need to revisit the code for another three years. But in the meantime, we have the most updated and timely fire code that's out there and available. And then last but not least, uh, I talk about it all the time. We're sub six minutes yet again. Not exact numbers that I've always seen before, but these they all look familiar when they start with five minutes. And so um, our crews are continuing to do an excellent job getting out and getting on scene quickly and providing intervention and care that's needed to help people have a positive outcome. And so it's just a credit to our members and their knowledge of our districts, and it's a credit to them and their, their willingness to make sure that they prioritize expedited response. And so um, I'll close with saying uh, 2022 has been quite a year, and I think we're optimistically looking ahead to all that 2023 will bring. And we're hopeful that uh, among all those things, it's going to bring us with a couple of great new employees. And it's going to bring us with a lot of health, uh, fewer issues, a lot more training, a lot more uh, opportunities to engage the way we once did before. And I know some of the folks are chopping at the bit as an example to get back out and maybe do the pancake breakfast and maybe get back out and do some of the things that were interactive and things that had just become part of the the, um, the expectation of the community and all the members in the department. And so we're, we're hopeful. Um, I think there's been already conversation about the meetings moving back to in person. We'll see if the, the, the COVID changes um, create any challenges with that or whether or not we're able to actually do so uh, effective sometime in March, I believe. And so looking forward to that, if that's you know the, the ability that we have, because I know I'm, I'm always, I've been afar from you guys for almost the entire time I've been here,
<laughs> you did great. Yeah, that was an excellent report, Chief White. Oh, thank you. I, I hope you continue to feel better. I'm, I'm fighting. I, I don't know what it, I haven't had a cold in probably two and a half years, and and it's just there's something that's just going around the area here. So I've been I've been coughing thankfully on mute for the last few minutes myself. So uh, I'm sorry to hear that. I, <laughs> I, can continue, I can continue to feel to feel better. Thank you. Thanks. Um, any uh, questions or comments from the public? Yeah, one second, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Chief, for uh, a good year, another good year. Um, <clears throat> look forward to next year. Um, my question is re uh, concerning the um, 911 uh, dispatch. And I think I, what I heard from you is basically uh, the sheriff is saying, we're not getting enough money and uh, set up your own um, your own response unit. And that just seems crazy to me. Are you sure this is not a negotiation, that there isn't something that can be worked out? It seems like to me, in most of the, the uh, calls that you have, you're going to have a dual response uh, uh, from the agencies anyhow. So it does seem to me that it's more efficient to have uh, one center as opposed to two centers. Um, you don't have to answer it. I'm sure you, you, you've considered it, but I, I honestly, it just, as a taxpayer, it just seems very duplicative and uh, maybe not a great way to go. Um, so anyhow, thank you. Can I respond to her? Uh, are there any other public comments? Uh, I have no other public comments. Okay, go ahead, Chief. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Nesso. I think uh, the challenge wasn't, I don't believe, as much fiscally driven by the sheriff as it was just their desire to make sure they could focus on providing services that were law-based services as opposed to the fire-based services and law-based services. As I indicated, um, law enforcement agencies in general and, and even dispatch centers in general throughout the region are having challenges right now hiring staff. Um, there's a training component, component, there's a retention component, and I think the sheriff just kind of said, hey, by the way, we haven't even fully cost recovering everything that we could have, just to, to kind of help understand some of the challenges they were having, but I don't really think the, the money was the issue because it wasn't really communicated that that was a primary issue because I think we could have really found common ground there pretty quickly if that was the case. So I think, again, this was driven by the sheriff's desire to just allow his staff to focus on providing the best law enforcement-based dispatch as possible. Um, the, the, the silver lining in this, if there is any, is the fact that they're allowing us to utilize a facility that they're located at and be co-located. There will be a, a division, if you will, in that room, so that it's clear who's providing fire and it's clear who's providing um, law dispatch. There's going to be a wall in between both centers, and I think that's probably not necessarily a bad idea, but there will be a door, from what I understand, allowing access to both sides. But the, the goal there is to have two distinct centers that are co-located. There's a um, computer-aided dispatch reconfiguration that needs to happen, central to or central to what fire departments want to do that necessarily law enforcement may not need, need um, for their needs. And so, um, this is an opportunity. The, the great thing about this is it looks like all of the agencies within the county will come in under this one agreement with Marin County Fire Department, who's stepping up to actually provide that service in the absence of the Sheriff's Department um, no longer providing the service. So I think there is an opportunity here, and we'll be able to see over time if this is something that can function optimally for all the fire agencies in the county as opposed to doing the joint um, law and fire dispatch. I gotta be honest, I don't see very many communities doing joint law and fire dispatch anywhere. Um, it's usually separate and distinct. And I think there's been a long standing history of wanting to keep those things separate and distinct. And so when the Sheriff agreed to take these on some years back, I think uh, there was a lot of relief provided, I know, especially to San Rafael. But outside of that, uh, I don't think it was just really a dollar situation per se. I think it was a operational thing more than anything. Thank you, Chief. Any anything else? Report. All right. Well, thank you, Chief, again for your report. Good to see you. Hope you feel better. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you all. Happy holidays to you as well. We'll see you in 2023. Take Merry care. Christmas. Same to you. Thank you much. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, Chief. Thank Steve. you. Um, all right, then let's move on to park and recreation matters. Um, Draft minutes, Park and Rec. Uh, Director Case was at the meeting, but he's not here. I can give you some brief highlights, or uh, you can just refer to the minutes, whichever you, uh, the board would choose is fine with me. Um, I'm okay to refer to the minutes, but any, anyone else? I, I actually listened to it, but I was a, I mean, not a commissioner, but I'll refer to the minutes. Director I'm good. Okay. Public? Uh, yeah, one second. Stephen. Uh, yeah, I just uh, want to point out that um, uh, uh, Chris's and Ian's uh, suggestion of uh, a park bench and a picnic table as a, uh, uh, a test uh, was really received well uh, from all the commissioners. And, um, you know, I posted that news on Nextdoor and just, uh, uh, you know, asked people to respond, what do you think of it? And I got swamped with gushing uh, support of the idea. People really love the idea of a, a view bench. So this is going to be, uh, I think, a, a very positive addition. And we need to thank uh, Ian and Chris for uh, making that happen, I guess. I, I, I don't know. Do you vote on it? I, 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 you know, it was pretty much decided um, on the commission level that we try it out, but I don't know if it, uh, the board actually has to uh, vote on it. Um, so that was very popular. I actually, a couple of days ago, I suggested, hey, wouldn't it be cool to have uh, a similar friendship bench that I described uh, should be near the horseshoe pit? Um, and people really like that idea too. Uh, the idea that this uh, there would be a, a destination where you could sit and, you know, have a have a lunch and talk with your friends and um, look at the view. And um, I think that that was very positive. I mean, people could have uh, memorials or birthday parties, whatever they do, but it would be a, just kind of a nice place to uh, absorb the beauty of our valley. Um, and that also uh, received a lot of very positive uh, messages on Nextdoor. Um, so uh, anyhow, uh, I just, I want to commend uh, the effort for the park bench um, and uh, uh, you need to talk to them about it, but, but it's, it's obviously a very positive thing. And I hope that you support it and get it installed so we can uh, test out whether it works well. Thanks. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I'm too excited to, to see more about the park bench. It sounds awesome. Um, all right, moving on to approval of item two, the Miller Creek Trail Initiative, amendment to Oakview subdivision agreement regarding financial contribution to be received by district from developer of senior living center. Yeah, I want to make clear on this one. Thank you, um, Lisa. Uh, the sole issue right now that we're looking at is this agreement. That's why I let off with that in my staff report. This is not in any way um, 
continuing to push the project forward or uh, anything of that nature, does not commit the district to the Creek Trail project. There's actually still a lot of research um, and other items to go before we can continue to move forward on that. But what it does do is memorialize uh, the arrangement and the agreement between the developer of the senior center and the district in terms of uh, their role, and in this case, um, a financial contribution towards the construction of this trail that originally was kind of stated back in 2006. So uh, the agreement that is in front of you today does that. Um, it certainly has gone through our uh, legal counsel process in terms of drafting it. It will be recorded uh, against the properties uh, if approved and once executed. Uh, the developers are comfortable with this. They are uh, ready to move forward to kind of put this behind them as well. Um, so I would just say if there's kind of any questions, um, the, you know, the one the, it's the exact same as was presented last month, with the one change being that if the road and the bridge are not constructed by December 31st, um, which would then allow us to move forward on constructing the trail, we can, uh, the district reserves the right to revisit the total cost on this project from a cost estimate standpoint. Yes. All right, is there, do I hear a motion to approve? Motion to approve. I will second it, just because you made it crystal clear. <laughs> any, uh, any comments or questions? <laughs> Seeing none, um, is there anything from the public? Sure, one second. Steven. Yeah, you ready? Everyone hold their, their seats. I want to commend Eric for uh, the good job that he's done uh, on this. Um, there was something that we uh, we didn't mention, and that was Eric uh, mentioned at the meeting that uh, the Oaks people uh, need uh, have an access issue. Um, they don't want to build a huge retaining wall for the road. And I suggested, hey, if that's if they need us to do that, let's maybe give it to them. But maybe we could use it as a negotiation uh, lever uh, for the trail, funding the trail. But it looks like it's happened without that lever. Um, but uh, so anyhow, I guess uh, uh, Eric, you know, should be commended for uh, getting this uh, this promise a little bit further uh, down the road here. So uh, that's all. So Eric probably should. Uh, I would hope that he would inform you on on what he what I'm referencing. It. Um, I, I don't want to speak for him, um, but it has to do with a big retaining wall that they don't want to build, and they would have to use our land as a go through, perhaps. Well, I'm taking a moment of silence there. That, that was wonderful feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, awesome. Well, on that note, <laughs> Uh, at least I can. I, th this has been brought up at the board in the past, um, actually quite a while ago, and it was uh, mentioned briefly at the other meeting. Uh, one of the things that we have been working with this group on also is uh, the property where they're building their senior facility is butts right up against district property. This isn't a pass-through thing or anything like that. Um, their original plans called for you know making a very steep slice into the hillside and then supporting that with retaining walls to go along the roadway that does traverse entirely on their property. Um, the civil engineers that they are working with suggested potentially the ability to uh, grade the hillside to a less steep degree, which would eliminate the need for kind of sharp hillside cuts. Um, this is not an impact to the district or this space of land. I've seen their preliminary plans, had them reviewed by an independent civil engineer, uh, sent back a couple comments. They're just not ready for that to be brought to the board. Um, as far as a negotiating tool, um, I understand what Stephen's saying. I don't know that I, I fully agree with utilizing that as a negotiating tool towards this. I think the agreement on the trail is a fair and reasonable agreement, uh, a standalone, and they're kind of two entirely separate things. Um, that's just certainly my opinion. Uh, and I also uh, think that having this kind of graded and down through will actually kind of help the upper part of the property as well. And all of their work would be continue, everything we've discussed, they would be liable for any of this into perpetuity. Um, and that would all be part of the agreement recorded against the property as well on the grading. But more will come from that uh, as they get farther down the line. It's a no impact to that property uh, in terms of any sort of a negative impact. And we just asked for some clarifications on some of their original uh, plans that were submitted. So that's where that's at. Thank you for the clarification, Eric. Um, I think we are good to go to a vote. Mayor President Ruggieri. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Kilkenny. Director Shea. Aye. Thanks. All right. So motion is approved. Um, Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Reports. Hello, everyone. Um, uh, thank you, Lisa. Um, so yeah, last Friday, well, we had our annual holiday event here at the community center. We've been calling the last two years a Jingle Bell Jazz, um, basically a holiday uh, live concert and open house. And um, the event on Friday was, was great. Um, the house was packed and uh, we had a really great uh, band playing a bunch of holiday favorites, uh, really uh, talented jazz combo that's been coming for a lot of years now. And, um, it's been fun. They used to be uh, accompanying our, our Winterfest event more as kind of background music. And this last two years, we've done more of a featured concert, and it's really gone well. And it's been, um, it's been a really good time. We were planning on doing a repeat of last year's outdoor uh, concert event. And um, with the, the iffy rain forecast, we got a little nervous about that and um, decided to play safe and, and move the, the main event indoors. But we kept our patio open uh, with the fire pit and the heat lamps and um, uh, some tables and activities out there. And uh, thankfully, it didn't rain. And we were able to utilize all that. And we needed the space because the um, attendance was so high this year that we had basically the whole patio was filled up. The community center was, was completely filled up with, uh, with families. Um, and, and it was really, a really great time. Uh, in our lobby, we had uh, Santa Claus made an appearance. And um, everyone, uh, I was going to say kids, but it was actually adults who were able to take photos with Santa. Uh, all night and, and that was um, a, a great a great time i got my photo with santa as well and, um, and it was really a really nice time and, and we saw uh, just a great great turnout from the community and, and we're very pleased with, with how it all went so um, our next event will be our um our winter wine tasting they'll be coming up in early march and i'll be uh, announcing details about that uh, in the coming months um other news on the rec department side um, staff is currently working on uh, preparing for our spring summer Marinewood review and with that all of our spring summer programs, um, our camps, our spring adult and youth classes, our special events and um, plans for the pool season are all underway. Um, this time of year we do have our winter break camp running, um, I guess that's next week, and we have a lot of our summer staff in town both from the camps and the pool and we always take advantage of that during the winter time to bring some of our senior uh, staff, uh, supervisor staff in to help us with the planning process, help kind of um, troubleshoot and, and uh, workshop some ideas and that's always a really, a really great uh, time to reconnect with our staff, uh, figure out, and we do actually interview people that are applying for um, more leadership positions this next season and it's a chance for us to um, kind of plan with them and, and they reconnect. So we're looking forward to that and uh, we've got a lot of good plans in place. Our, our spring summer Marine Review is set to come out in um, 
mid to late February. So we'll, we'll be working on that this next couple months. Uh, we are currently, um, we'll be holding some interviews for our vacant recreation supervisor position uh, next week. We have um, a handful of candidates that we're, we're excited about and hopefully we will um, end up choosing one of them for the position. I'll, I'll definitely keep you updated with that process as we move forward. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to touch on for the, for the recreation side was just, um, I did include our summer comparison report of um, expenditures and revenue from our summer program. Um, and just to give everyone a chance to, to see that, I'm not gonna go over it in super great detail, I'll be happy to answer questions at the end of my report. But um, I basically, I think this is at the end in the packet, this is the last page, I believe. Um, and I, I gave you a five year uh, snapshot, uh, 2018 to 2022. Um, and this report includes revenue and expenditure totals for summer camps, aquatic programs, the overall pool season, um, everything, but it does not include the utility costs. And I gave a five year snapshot of this because um, the last uh, three years, um, I guess, yeah, the last 2021, 2020 were both um, significantly impacted by uh, the COVID-19 pandemic um, when we had to severely limit the number of programs that we were offering and limit the um, enrollment in those programs. And so um, it really wasn't apples to apples to look at uh, this year versus last year. And so I wanted to get back to 2019, 2018 were the last two years um, that were more normal. And 2022 definitely represented a return to a normal level of programming and normal enrollment in our programs. And um, I think the numbers, as you can look at, um, uh, do represent a return to um, you know, the good kinds of um, both expenditures and the revenue that we would have been expecting to see had we not fallen into that dip uh, during those two years uh, that were affected. So we're very pleased with how the summer turned out. Um, the the, the so the summer camps and the pool did, did very well, um, definitely on trend in what we were trying to do. Um, there, are, I, I included a, a few points of interest. I'm not going to talk through all those. Just one thing that, that you might notice changed significantly. We had to change how we operated the pool um, this last couple of years. Um, during 2020, 2021, we were stuck with um, limiting things and doing everything by reservation only. We did not have a pool membership option. We weren't taking drop-ins for a lot of uh, those seasons. And um, so our pool revenue uh, line was um, including these, these reservations. Everyone had to like pay to reserve the pool for every time they used it. Um, this year we did away with that. We're back to drop-ins and using punch cards and allowing people to purchase a season membership. And um, we saw our uh, demand for memberships go go back to uh, pre-COVID levels, which we're really pleased about. Um, and not everybody came back this season. Not all of our regular Returned. I think some of our um, senior lab swimmers uh, were still more comfortable coming back into the public you know, setting and being with a lot of other people. But what we did see was a, a lot of the people that found us during um, the pandemic when a lot of pools were closed, especially all, all the indoor pools, we actually gained a lot of new um, users, a lot, of, a lot of people that uh, they couldn't swim at their normal pool found us and then ended up sticking with us and buying a membership this, this season, which was really cool. So um, that was a really nice thing to see. And um, we also did away with uh, some of the other benefits of the membership that had to do with um, early access to, to camp um, enrollment. We, we didn't know, we didn't know, we no longer offer that as a, uh, as a benefit. And um, we didn't see a significant decrease in our membership. So um, that was really encouraging and uh, we're really pleased with that. Uh, and then there's one other point uh, that I wanted to make is just, um, uh, that our summer camp program, um, even though we have um, these ever increasing costs associated with the minimum wage hikes that keep going up every year, um, we uh, were able to keep our staffing costs down, to keep our supply costs down, even with inflation. And so I just want to congratulate Robin Bruton, our assistant recreation director, on running a really efficient program, um, keeping our camps running really efficiently, and counteracting um, some of those uh, rising costs and continuing to, to kind of keep us bringing in um, you know, a higher net revenue. So um, we're very pleased with how, how that turned out. Um, and I'll be able to take questions about the summer report at the end if anyone has any other details they, they were curious about. On the parks maintenance uh, side of my report, uh, we, uh, as Eric mentioned earlier, and showed some, some great photos. Um, the staff did a lot of work landscaping uh, in front of the parks maintenance facility. We uh, did a lot of plantings, added some ground cover and some, some cool boulders. Um, we actually repurposed those from uh, other areas and, and stuff we weren't using uh, for the boulders. And it's looking really nice. Um, the two picnic tables uh, are looking really good in, in those areas. And um, uh, there's been talk about that earlier in the meeting. But yeah, the picnic tables actually do seat like eight to 10 people, and they're in a circle, and people can definitely look at each other while they're sitting there. I think it's going to be a really nice spot for people to, to stop along the path. And um, they, they really fit in well with the woodwork of the fence and the, and the eaves of the building. And it's really, uh, it, looks, it looks very nice. We're very pleased with how the path and the landscaping turned out. We'll do a little bit more with that as we see how the plants mature and, and how the area looks once the fencing comes down, the construction fencing comes down. But, um, this first, first stage of landscaping, we're very pleased with it and we're excited to unveil it uh, to, the, to the public. So um, we're really looking forward to bringing the fences down. Um, we had a lot of rain uh, this last week, as, as you all know, and uh, the staff were out monitoring drains and the creek and the roof. And uh, we did uh, add a pile of sand to the parking lot with sandbags for people that were trying to shore up their, their properties um, against flooding. Uh, everything seems to be in, in good condition um, so far. And we're hoping that there'll be a need for that sand uh, just in terms of getting more rain this season. Um, and then we, had, we also were out uh, this week starting to do some erosion control, um, adding willow plantings um, in vulnerable areas along the creek bank. So today the staff were out there in the knee-deep mud uh, planting uh, willow shoots all morning, and um, which was very cold, but also uh, an enjoyable, an enjoyable time. And, We'll be doing a lot more of that this month. Um, I've talked about this before, but December is the magic month when the willow trees, you can you can plant branches, cut branches from the willows, and they will uh, regenerate, they'll grow roots and turn into brand new trees. And um, December is the month when the willows work on their root systems instead of their branches. And um, so we're going to do as much planting in the vulnerable areas of the creek as we can um, this month and all the way into next month and, uh, and just do what we can to, to kind of protect our property and um, abate the erosion that we, that we see. So um, that's all I wanted to report on, but please let me know if uh, you have any, any questions about anything that I talked about or anything else. Thank you. Um, thank you, Luke. Anything from the board? Yeah, Luke, I just wanted to thank you guys for the uh, the Christmas feel. You guys did an outstanding job decorating the uh, the facility, and the outside looked great too. I'm just overwhelmed with the pride that I see in your staff. Um, they are doing such a great job. Uh, I appreciate it, and no wonder that the turnout was as big as it was. So, thank you. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate that. I'm sorry to have missed it. Sorry. Um, two questions. I do want, or two comments. I do want to thank the maintenance staff for doing the planting, even though I know in the beginning of this. Um, of the approval process and the planning process, they wanted it all covered, but I really appreciate that they stepped up and is you know, participating and helping making it pretty. Um, and then my other question, actually question, um, I noticed, and just by being at the pool for so long, so many times, so many years, um, we don't use, when it says vending, we don't use the vending machine anymore, right? You guys go in, did we ever use an outside company or did you guys manage that? <clears throat> Yeah, um, so the, the vending has been um, from a few different areas. Like, once upon a time, we had
that we had operated ourselves and then we had outsourced that to a company that would come in and stock it and you know would just pay us a percentage for the permission to be there um, with also some of the, the drink vending machines and we have um, slowly phased those out and are uh, pretty much taken all uh, snack and food sales out of the pool in internally and so we're um we were not using a vending machine this last couple of years, and we we're just selling um, snacks and drinks at the front counter of the pool um, and some ice cream as well. So that's we, we're no longer using outside contractors for that. I think it's fabulous. Yeah, we, we make a lot more money off of it too. It's, it's really we don't have to deal with uh, calling the vending machine guy when the um, when you know the snack doesn't fall and we can't. We don't, you know, it's like sorry. So yeah. it's, it's, it's been a nice, uh, a nice change. Or the Agreed. disappointed seven-year-old when his dollar bill just disappears <laughs> and yeah, no reward. I mean, as a parent from a swim team kid, and be like, can I have an ice cream? I'm like, no, that's for the pool. So even you know, it happens anytime the pool is open. So it's kind of nice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then again, just thank you. I'm just gonna, even though I wasn't there, um, echo just and above and beyond of the whole staff. So please wish them happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whichever one you want. Oh, I will pass it along. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and I was at the, the Jingle Bell Jazz. It was awesome, Luke. You and your team seriously outdid yourselves. It was incredible. So many people in the community were there. Um, I actually, I actually liked having it inside. Um, I think just with the amount of light that was there, as compared to when it's out outside, you know, if you could all see my little rascals like to run away and run in and, and say, you know, they, I, I, in this scenario, I was able to see them at all times, and I thought that that was really comforting. Um, and I know that you know other other parents that were there um, said the same. So it was it was just a really um, it, it was a wonderful event. So so thank you again for for putting it together and then for you know thinking quickly to kind of change path when um, when you got rain was coming and it actually I think turned out to be a really really good solution. So appreciate that. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks. I, uh, we totally agreed. I think this was our ideal version of the event. You know, moving moving forward. So I'm glad the rain forced us inside because we, we agreed it was, like, it was better than having to keep everybody in the cold and, and, and the dark. So it was a nice um, kind of best of both worlds for, for us. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I have one question. Um, I thought this was really interesting. Looking at this report on aquatics, um, and noticing that, you know, the the, the wages just like you mentioned, the minimum wage has been increasing every year. Yet I see when we look at um the expenditures for like say two, and I'm looking at the aquatic section of your report, the wages comparison of almost like fifty percent um was spent on wages in 2022 versus 2019. How yeah, is, that one, that how one, is how one, able to do that? Yeah, um, that, that's so the aquatics section, just to kind of clarify that aquatics, um, the revenue in the aquatics area includes all of our uh, group and private swim lessons, our um, guards and training camp that we run throughout the summer, and um, our lifeguard classes that we teach throughout the spring and summer and fall. And so um, that one, uh, depending on how many classes we teach and how many sessions of camp we run and how many swim lessons we offer, determines um, sort of what the what the wages are and, and how big those camps are. So that one's um, a little bit more variable depending on just like what we're doing on a, on a given uh, summer and, and how big those programs are. Um, so that, that one, I can't speak to exactly why our, our, our wages were lower in that, in that category. Um, I think partly we were... Um, we were running a much maybe a smaller uh, guards and training camp. We didn't have to have as many counselors working all day all summer for that. Um, but uh, but then we did teach a lot of swim lessons and, and so um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I have to dive in a little bit more closely for, for that one. But in the, the part time wages in the upper uh, box for, for just the general pool operations, that's more looking at like the, the daily operations of the pool and, and how many lifeguards are working and uh, just on a you know on a, on a general day. So um, I can definitely get, get more info for you on, on what those you know what that was. But um, that was a little more variable every year. Yeah, absolutely, it, just, it, was, it, it sparked my interest. So it was just a curiosity. So thank you for that. Yeah, um, anything from public? Yeah, one second, please. This is a dense report, and as usual, uh, uh, Luke and his staff have been busy. I'm going to start from the top. Um, we have two sources of income. We have our business, and of course, we have our tax revenue. And um, while this report's interesting, um, describing the event, it really provides pr precious little on um, the financials of the event. And uh, it's nice that people were enjoying themselves, but uh, did we spend more than we took in? Or, um, uh, these, this is the kind of information that if we track it, we can um, do better. We can you know, expand certain activities and cut back on other activities. Um, so I would like to see more detail. As we go down here, um, I just want to touch on a couple of things. Uh, the well, okay. So I, I'm going to go through here, not not the way that Luke talked about it, but as it appears, uh, we're talking about landscaping, um, uh, taking out um, bike uh, jumps, and you know that did. Uh, some individuals are really concerned about the, uh, uh, the park staff taking out swings and other stuff that kids find fun in our open space. Um, I did another post on next door uh, showing a picture of a little girl in a willow hut, and I said, "Wouldn't you like some? Who would like something like this uh, in our open space for, for kids to play in?" Um, and everyone loved that idea. But uh, the unfortunately, I think the parks department doesn't like, like an idea like that. I do think that we need to think of our uh, our open space as an extension of our parks, a different kind of uh, um, maintenance, but uh, certainly it's a recreational resource, and we should encourage people to get out in our open space and enjoy it. Um, it can be a magical experience for everyone, but especially our kids. I think that's it's one of the reasons I moved here, and I'm sure many people moved here because of that. Uh, we can improve the quality of our lives at, for very low cost. Um, now, uh, going down to the spreadsheet, I don't quite understand it. Swim team reimbursements have dropped precipitously, and I think I know the reason why, but I'm instead of guessing, I'd like to hear the answer why they dropped so so much. Um, uh, Luke, can you uh, tell us? Um, yeah, I think that's a pretty simple. We, we basically um, used to uh, be the fiscal agent for the swim team, and um, uh, we would we would cover the payroll for the coaches um, for the swim team and then they would reimburse us at the end of the season. Um, the swim team no longer operate, we no longer operate with the swim team in that manner. So um, that's, it's less of a reimbursement uh, anymore. Um, instead, it's now that we charge the swim team a rate for using the pool for the season. And then, um, so that's like a per hour rate for their use of the pool for practices and swim meets. And then um, that number, you know, for 2022, the 22, uh, 752 number would be, um, that was what the total cost was. And then they, you know, cut us a check for that. Um, so they're not reimbursing us for us fronting the cost for them um, as much as they're just paying for use of the pool now. So we did make a change to the agreement. And that's why the number has changed. Great. Thank you, Luke. Any other public comment? No, but I have a just a follow up like clarification comment or question for you guys. Um, how often 
are, and even in the past, maybe 10, 15, 20 years, I mean, I remember swim, swings being taken down when I was a kid as a time, but how often are swings put up in our open space um, that the guys go and take down? Does it happen weekly, monthly? I'm just uh, no, it's, it's, it's pretty infrequent. I'd say um, the uh, rope swing that, that appears in open space that, that you know, we come across and take down, that just happens a couple times a year um, at most. Okay, thank you. All right. So I think I think that's it. Thanks again, Luke, for, for your report. It was very comprehensive and informative. Appreciate it. And all, all, all that your team does. Um, moving on to board member items of interest, requests for future agenda items. I have none. None. Dr. Shea, none. No, no. I would just uh, remind that uh, next month, I mean, I'm sure we'll have other things coming up too, but we'll, we'll have uh, the potential appointments to the commission and then also a uh, potential uh, board liaison appointments to the various commissions as well. Mind <laughs> I, I did want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas to you, Bill. Merry Christmas, Bill. And to everyone, Happy Holidays and Happy New Year. Um, anything from the public? Uh, yeah, one second, please. Stephen. Thank you, everyone, again. And yes, uh, let's all have a good holiday um, together. Um, you know, they, <laughs> I brought it up, it was just kind of brushed aside, but, um, you know, there are many, many um, parks across the world that have a enlightened attitude about their open space, that it should be a, a, a joyful celebration of nature and, and people. And um, when I brought up the Willow Hut, uh, that would probably get knocked down by the Parks Department, or even a swing uh, safely built would be cut down. I really think you're, it's, I almost think of it as a crime against childhood, because these kids are really doing wonderful things. You, don't forget, they've been cooped up uh, for the last couple of years in front of a computer. I would like you guys to really rethink how our open space can be utilized better. And not only for our quality of life, but actually the practical reason of making us the most awesome community ever. Um, there is an unfortunate uh, uh, tenor uh, on, the, on the board that we do things like they've always been done and that's a, that's, that's a good thing. Well, how about let's do something better? That's what happened years ago when they created the open space, when they created the, the fire department and the CSD. These were people with men and women with vision that created the community we inherit today. Let's make this a more beautiful, friendly and uh, awesome community. And so to do that, we need you, we need leadership. Thank you. I have one more comment here, Lisa. Please. Hello. 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 From uh, 823, just a series of numbers. Did you have a, a comment? You see your hand raised. Okay, I'm not sure they're not muted, so maybe that was an accidental hand raising. I will go ahead and All right. off. Can I say one thing about the open space? It was purchased in the olden days, so no one could build on the hills around us. That's it. They had nothing but empty land, and they wanted to keep it that way. You can play all you want there. There are trails everywhere, goat trails down every hill to every street out in Lucas Valley. I've been on them. I took the kids on them. You can play whatever you want throughout the open space. Use your damn imagination. But it's just open space. Thank you. Thanks, Director Shea. Anything else? Uh, hold on, you have your my hand came back up. Let's try this again. One second. All right, try again here. I would How about now? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, we gotcha. Awesome. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thanks, Shay, for that history lesson. Too. Um, you know, I, this is Ryan, Mann, by the way. Um, I've been a community member for almost 23 years, and one of the reasons was because of this great community and my wife grew up in the area. Um, and I, you know, being on some of these meetings and hearing, hearing what you guys don't do, um, you know, I, I kind of want to do 180 and thank you for everything that you do. do. Um, Luke, you and your team with the beer tasting, the music in the park, the Halloween fun, um, the, the jingle festival that you had, you know, that's the stuff that makes these, this community so special and people, and it's, it's what gravitates people to come here in the camps as well. And for the board, your leadership and what you're doing to provide a welcoming community and listening to the community and doing what you do is, is especially as volunteers and having to deal with what you have to deal with, um, thank you for what you do. So in, in, in the end, I just want to wish you all a very happy holiday, a uh, wonderful new year, and um, thank you for what you do for all of us. Have a great night. You too, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. That was, that was wonderful to hear. Please come back to our meeting. <laughs> All right. With that, um, Lisa, before you adjourn, too, uh, just thank you again for serving as board president for the last year. Yes. It's the role that I tend to interact the most with, and you've always been very responsive. And I thought you did an excellent job facilitating, uh, at times, challenging meetings. But uh, I just really appreciate all your time and efforts put into it. So thank you very much. You're here. Yeah, yeah. as Bill would say. <laughs> well, it was definitely, as I mentioned, it was definitely an honor. Um, and a, a, a wonderful experience. I, I learned a lot this year. So thank you all for your patience with me as I sort of learned how to navigate this role. Um, so yeah, that's that's all I have to say. I'm, I'm excited to continue on with the board for this next year as well. As much as it. All right. Well, with that. Can I make a motion to adjourn? Please do. I will I make motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion seconded. Yay. Thank, Thank you all. Have, nice Thank you. have a wonderful holiday. Be safe and happy new year. We'll we'll see you in the new year. Hope you're yeah. in January. Bye. Bye. Bye.